Hi everybody, I'm Devin Zaminder and I'm from the University of Cape Town. And today I'll be discussing our investigations, our initial investigations into um, using audio classification to automate the trimming of recorded lectures. Uh, so basically, uh, I mean firstly, uh, a brief overview of the talk. Um, I'll be discussing some of the reasons why we chose to automate. Um, uh, thereafter, I'll talk about the methodology and approach we took, discussing, then I'll show you some of the results we obtained. I'll briefly talk about the OpenCast implementation because I have to admit, I, I wasn't solely responsible for that. Uh, for that, you'll have to chat to my colleague, Cornet. Uh, he was the chief architect for uh, hooking it up to OpenCast. And lastly, I'll talk about some of the challenges and some of the future work uh, I think we should follow, uh, take to improve the classification model. So why automate? Uh, as Stephen mentioned in his talk, um, we are seeing a, a great increase in the volumes uh, of recordings. Uh, and now with the introduction of our opt-out policy, uh, those volumes are increasing even more. Um, another reason is that we have a limited number of staff available for trimming, um, and that's causing a problem. Um, we want to reduce the overall dependence of OpenCast on staff, uh, thereby improving the turnaround time from capture to publication. And lastly, of course, automation is cool. So now onto the methodology we took. Um, we didn't want to recreate the wheel, right? So we decided to look for existing open source um, tools and libraries. Uh, and in our extensive search of the web, we stumbled upon um, a Python open source library for audio analysis called Pi Audio Analysis. Um, it's a very cool library, very powerful. Um, it can do a number of things from detecting silence in audio, uh, classifying an audio signal, segmenting and classifying an audio signal, um, the vast number of other things. Uh, but we've basically fo focused on um, the classification of the audio signal and the segmentation and classifi classification func function. Uh, we chose a binary classification model uh, with two classes, uh, speech and non-speech, where speech um, is a single dominant voice, uh, basically like the lecturer's voice, and non-speech is the lack of such a dominant voice that could include anything from chatter, noise, silence, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, to evaluate the classification model, uh, we did the following. We downloaded audio from previous recordings from OpenCast. We segmented these audio files into the two classes, speech and non-speech. And the table here shows you uh, the number of audio files we ended up with, uh, it, almost 7,000 files, of which 3,476 were speech and 3,386 were non-speech. Uh, we then did a tenfold cross-validation and we use uh, the following uh, metric, metrics uh, to evaluate the classification model, precision, recall, accuracy, and F measure. F measure. Uh, to evaluate the trim, part, trim point detections, uh, we did the following. So we downloaded uh, more audio files from OpenCast together with their ex uh, corresponding SMIL. Uh, we wrote a simple wrapper script for PI audio analysis that basically used the segmentation and classification function in the, in the library uh, a brief explanation of what segmentation and classification actually is. So basically, it takes an audio file and it segments it into one second chunks. And then it classifies each, each chunk according to the classification model. And then if they are corresponding um, segments of the same class, it then combines it. And then that is then returned as a, pi, a NumPy um, uh, array with the uh, time, time, time stamp and then the um, respective classification class. Uh, we use the first and last in instances from the NumPy array uh, as the start and end trim points. And then uh, the trim points from the downloaded smalls, we use that as gold standard data. And then we plotted the difference between the predicted and the gold standard data to see um, how, the evaluate, uh, how the trim points evaluate. Uh, now on to some results. Uh, the training and, and the training of the classification model uh, produced the following confusion matrix. Uh, we see that only 100 out of 3,476 speech uh, audio signals uh, was misclassified, and only 44 out of 3,386 was classified, uh, was misclassified. Um, the performance matrix were very, very, um, very, very good uh, in the upper 95% region. Uh, accuracy was 97.9%, precision was 98.7%, recall 97.1%, and F measure 97.9%. So this shows that the classification model worked very well. 
uh, when we plotted the differences between the starts and end trim points, um, we got the following graph. Um, you can see the red dots, that's the, end trim, the difference between the end, end trim points, and the blue dots is the start trim points. Uh, and you can see uh, that the start trim points uh, deviated very little, or just a number, just about four or five of them um, that, that were deviated quite, quite far from the gold standard data. But the end trim points uh, deviated a lot. Uh, we, it, we actually listened to the audio file to see what caused these deviations. And in both cases, um, a single dominant voice was present. So it classified it correctly. It's just that there was a single, single dominant voice present at the time. Uh, for the end trim points, what we noticed was that after, after the lecture, um, there's always, it's, there always seems to be a discussion between the lecturer and students. And the lecturer didn't turn the lapel microphone off and a dominant voice was present and it classified it as speech. So what happened was uh, for the entry points, it tends to be uh, greater than the, uh, it, it, it produced uh, much greater their values than, than, than the gold standard data. Okay, now onto the OpenCast implementation. Okay, I don't have a lot of knowledge about this, but uh, basically what we did was we modified the wrapper script a little bit, right? So we restricted uh, classification to audio files for only 55 minute lectures, because we wanted to keep it simple, uh, as this was like a proof of concept. Uh, we set thresholds for the speech segments, for the start and end speech segments, um, so that they didn't, so that th they were greater than or equal to a set number of seconds. And then we set a thres threshold for the non-speech segments so that we could exclude things like pauses when the lecturer paused uh, and, and those sort of things. So, um, non-speech segments had to be greater than a certain number of seconds as well. Again, if you have any questions about the implementation, I'd recommend you talking to Corinne. Uh, and some of the challenges we faced. Um, as I discussed, uh, as I mentioned, um, at the end of the lecture, there's always, t always ten it tended to be a, a conversation between the lecturer and student and that produced some uh, deviations from gold standard data. We weren't very happy with that, but there, there are some things that we can do to actually improve on that, and I'll discuss that, discuss that just now. Uh, and another thing that we dis uh, discovered was that the boundary, boundary mics, if the, if the classroom wasn't fitted with a lapel microphone and the lecturer used the boundary microphones, um, then a dominant voice wasn't really present because there was a lot of ambient noise, ambient noise present and that caused uh, misclassifications. Uh, so what we did to improve on those things uh, to improve on uh, classrooms with boundary mics was we created another classification model specifically for uh, rooms with boundary mics only. So that the classifi classification model was a little, little more robust. And it showed, and, and, and we actually got good results from, from that model. Uh, lastly, uh, some of the future work I think we should do, uh, we can investigate other classification models. Uh, for, for this, uh, for, for, for our research here, we use a uh, support vector machine but we could look into things like neural networks um, and so on. Um, also, uh, I think we can introduce a third class uh, to basically handle these conversations between lecturer and students. So we can create a, a third class for that, and then we can basically handle all those conversations at the end of the, of the lecture. Um, and lastly, I have uh, some resources here for you. If you're interested in Pi audio analysis, that's the link to it, you can just snap that. Um, we have um, our classification models already prepared um, and it's in uh, GitHub as well. Feel free to use it if you want to. If you want to know how to use them, uh, please chat to me and I'll tell you how to use them. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. I don't have a microphone to give me. <laughs> Did you no, see what we, we sep we've, we've got uh, in our open, open cast implementation, we uh, collect three streams. We've got the uh, presentation stream, the presenter stream, and an audio signal. So we only look at the audio signal coming from. Okay. So that's part of the workflow that happens in, on the open cast side. So we process the audio signal first, we get the trim points, and then that creates, we use that to create um, like a default small file for open cast. Yeah, 
We haven't done that. This was like a proof of concept, but uh, with the, you can actually do that. But we, because this was a proof of concept, we just focused on the start and end trim points. But uh, with the model, yes, you can, you can detect the trim points because the NumPy array that, that's returned will return the entire all use, and you can actually cut out this, the middle as well. Okay. You want the mic? There we go. Yeah, <laughs> the other one. Um, so on the implementation in OpenCast, we take the results from the audio trim analysis and then that creates a default small file, like uh, Devon said. And um, then there's some parameters that basically, if it's uh, less than an hour, like 55 minutes, and the start is in a reasonable amount of time, so the lecture started in like five minutes, and they ended in a reason reasonable amount of time, and there's no like chatter noise chunks in the middle, then it automatically gets trimmed, and it just gets published. Otherwise, it goes to a review process, and then the, that internal segment gets reviewed, and then that gets published. 